For this build, there are some points about slicer and print setup we wanted to make sure to convey. The main body requires the print to be paused in two places, once for the magnets embedded in the bottom, and once for the magnets in the sides. Proper magnet orientation was critical for this build, so taking the time to label them will help ensure that the pod functions properly. This design uses 13 12 by 3 mm disc magnets in the floor of the main body. We were trying to incorporate enough magnet strength to prevent the pod from sliding down a vertical surface, while also maximizing interior space, which is why the magnet configuration is flatter and wider. Initially, the floor used magnets that were only 2 mm thick, but the pod still slid down on some surfaces, even when empty. The thicker 3 mm magnets increased magnetic force enough for us to be more confident in the pod's holding power. The magnets in the main body floor were all placed with north facing up. The main body uses an additional four 12 by 3 mm disc magnets in four angled slots. These retain the feet in the vertical, tucked position when the pod is not attached to a metallic surface. These magnets were placed so that north faced inward. Later on, during development, we started to use brim ears, where the foot slot walls made contact with the bed plate. These seem to help prevent warping and bed adhesion problems in those areas. We printed the feet sideways to help ensure that the screw shafts stayed round. But because of this, the magnet cavities needed to be modeled as a square to minimize any potential issues when dropping the magnets in. These are also the same size as the other magnets in the project, 12 millimeters in diameter and 3 millimeters thick. At least that's what they're listed as. In reality, and as usual, they're actually a bit smaller. The magnets in the feet were oriented so that north faced up, toward the thicker part of the print. Even though these were round magnets going into square holes, the printer didn't seem to have any issues bridging the gap and sealing them in. Early on, we did have some issues with bed adhesion when printing the feet, so we used glue and a brim, but we set the brim object gap pretty wide at 0.23 millimeters and the parts came off without the need for any major cleanup. The lid buttons were printed upside down with the largest face on the build plate. We tried both normal and tree supports, and the normal supports detached much cleaner from the latch lip. The lid ring was printed upside down as well, and tree supports were manually painted onto the overhang surfaces for the buttonholes. After printing, those buttonholes should be cleaned up pretty well, to ensure that buttons slide in and out freely. We used a plastic tool when scraping the surface to avoid marring or scratching the part. The internal spring for the buttons needs to be printed using a material that is resilient and flexible. Something that is stiff and brittle will not work, such as a matte PLA. We tried PETG, and it has worked well so far. Installing the M3 inserts into the center riser plate should be fairly uncomplicated, and cold pressing the final millimeter helps to ensure a clean flush installation. Assembly of the lid should be relatively straightforward, but it did help to place the lid ring upside down on a work surface for installation of the buttons and the spring. Once the spring is in place, it should hold the buttons in for the next step. The center riser plate retains both the internal spring and the buttons. And using four 6mm countersunk M3 screws, the top plate sandwiches them securely in between. The buttons should slide freely in and out of the lid ring, automatically pushing back outward upon release. When pressing the M3 inserts into the bottom slot walls of the main body, we used only enough pressure to ensure that each insert sank in. This part of the print is relatively thin and unsupported, so there is a risk of warping the hinge wall downward with too much pressure. We also cold pressed along the cool edge of that wall to help ensure that we pressed parallel to the wall and not at an angle. It's best to wait a little while to ensure that the plastic has fully re-solidified before installing the feet. At first, screw them in, 
just until there is about a half millimeter protruding on the other side of the wall. This will allow the placement of a metal M3 washer so that it doesn't slide off. Then one of the feet can be inserted into the slot, and the screw can be threaded in further through the channel in the foot. You will know if you have properly installed the magnets if the foot magnetically stays in place during the screw installation. Before threading the screw all the way through, insert a second metal M3 washer in between the foot and the main body wall. These two washers on either side of the foot prevent contact and binding of the foot against the slot wall. Note that we use the metal M3 washers instead of the plastic type because the metal washers were available in thinner thicknesses. Then your magnet pod should be functionally complete. But a few final touches and details can go a really long way. We've already mentioned the functional benefit of using both PETG and PLA for this project, but using multiple colors can also add a lot to the aesthetics of the piece. So, if all the magnets are installed properly, and the screws in the foot hinges aren't torqued too tightly, the feet should automatically snap back against the main body of the pod when they're not attached to a magnetic surface. Here's a better look at some of the detail. We've already gotten a few questions around what the capacities are. The opening is 86 millimeters in diameter, and the cavity is about 30 millimeters deep. But it does have those protrusions into the cavity because of the foot wells and the accessory attachment points. Interior volume is about 165 cubic millimeters. And we've tested vertical holding power with a roll of quarters inside, which is about 8 ounces, or 230 grams. This, of course, is dependent upon the material and texture of the surface it's attached to. The design also incorporates accessory attachment points, which facilitates the possibility of enhancement to functionality. Maybe a bolt-on pod with additional magnets for a more secure attachment, or a bracket for a label. Imagination's the only limit, really. It would just need to fit into the slot and bolt into the M3 inserts that are 18 millimeters apart, center to center. The project files will be available on our site. You can click on the link in the description to take you to the store page. We'll also include a link to a spec sheet so that you can see what parts might be necessary for the project. Now we've got one last bonus. For all the Xeon Mobile Suit fans out there, we're including the design for a lid that's reminiscent of the chain mines from 0080. It's designed to fit a common remote LED configuration, so it will have the same red light that's seen in the anime. And the accessory attachment points can be used to string multiple units together, though I probably wouldn't recommend swinging them around once you do. Thanks to all of you for your interest and your support. We hope you've been learning as much as we have from these projects. As always, let us know your thoughts, questions, or concerns. Till next time.